FM, WSKB, Westfield. Eighty-nine point five FM WSKB. We're here with Tiger Talk, and I don't know. There's a rumble going on. Hi. Hi there. How you doing? Good. Welcome. I'm uh, Maureen Belarge, and I'm the Allied Health teacher here at the school, and I'm also the Skills USA coordinator. And apparently, you're pinch, hit, pinch hitting hosting today. I am. <laughs> and I do have four wonderful students here with me today to so help. You you guys just went through district competitions, right? Now you're moving on, so. Yes. We so explain what happened and what, what's going on from there. Yeah, on March 16th, uh, it was a Friday. We were supposed to go to district competition uh, earlier in the week, but we had snow, <laughs> right. unfortunately. And um, so March 16th on a Friday, we went out to North Adams to McCann Technical uh, High School out there. And we competed in 50 um, competitions. So 50 students went? Oh yeah, we had 50 competitors. Wow. Uh, we actually competed in 23 competitions. And we competed against nine other area schools. Um, so it was very exciting. Uh, we took home 21 medals. Wow. We took home 10 gold, seven silver, and four bronze medals. Now, what I heard from the superintendent is gold and silver move on, right? Yes, the gold and silver move on to the state competition, which is coming up at the end of uh, April. So we'll be going for three days, April 26th, April 27th, and April 29th. Uh, we'll be out in Marlboro, Mass. There's uh, five hotels housing about 3,000 students. Wow, that's huge. So it is huge. And um, there'd be probably about 800 kids in the main hotel 
And last year it was nice. We were able to stay in. Do you have um, the National Guard at the front door just in case? <laughs> they do have a private. <laughs> they do have a private security system, and the Army National Guard is <laughs> one of the sponsors. So, so that's funny that you say that. How many? Um, how many? Uh, like areas or, or uh, vocational competitions are there? Do you participate in all of them? No, we don't participate in all of them. They have some, uh, I'm going to say strange ones that I'm not even sure what they are. Mecha Obscure? Yeah, mechatronics. Um, what is <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> aesthetics, which is like taking care of people's skin. Okay, uh, yeah, so yeah. you don't have that shop, so you wouldn't right. compete in that, right? Right. Um, they have some post-secondary uh, dental assisting, uh, licensed practical nurse. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there's some contests that we just don't participate in. So you but do 23 of them, though? You, you we did 23. You currently have enough, or, or enough shop participation and things like that. Do all the shops here participate in that? Um, we, uh, aviation has a national um, aviation technology yeah, because contest, there's nothing. but in Massachusetts. They don't have any peers right now in Massachusetts, right? right? Or and probably even regionally. They probably don't even have any peers regionally at this point, right? Because they're one of, what, a handful of? They're like one of three. Right. Um, in this. In North, the country. In, yes, in New England yeah. area. Um, and uh, they would have to set it up and get sponsors to run the program, like Pratt & Whitney and... Uh, there's plenty of Gold aerospace, 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 aerospace firms, firms around here. Around, yes. Uh, people who are the judges, uh, they supply equipment, and I think they do it pro bono. So it, to get a contest written up and get it all done, it takes. It'll probably take two, three years, but it will. It will be here eventually. So, yeah. Yeah, aviation will be allowed to come. Um, the future farmers of America um, do. Horticulture, so they're really um, not um, involved in our Skills USA competition. So they have their own, they have something completely separate. They do. That they that they, they do. cool. So that's cool. So who did you bring with you this morning? Because I know when we do Rob and Joe, they'll talk for 20, 30 minutes, just amongst themselves. Right. And I hope they're listening because you know <laughs> they're not here, so I can give them a little grief. Yeah, we. Um, <laughs> I brought four students uh, from a variety of uh, the competitions. I have uh, next to me uh, Dan Shaw. Um, say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. He is industrial motor control. I have. So wait a minute. What's industrial motor control, okay. Dan? Uh, Talk right into the microphone. Well, there's uh, the residential side to electricity. But okay. I'm more on the uh, industrial factory side. So you're doing like um, machines in a shop, yeah. wiring those machines and making sure they work properly? Yep. Like systems, like garage doors or anything like that. That's the basic side, but a, you know, a yeah. printing press, Yep. stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, next to Dan, we have Cassie Garrett. Good morning. And Cassie, what are you competing in? I'm competing in medical terminology. Okay, so that's like, that would involve medical billing, coding, stuff like that? Is that where, that kind of where the, is that, that's not the beginning of it, no? No, medical terminology, do you want to tell them <sighs> what that is? Um, Come on. <laughs> Just What's, medical terms, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, it's Greek and Latin uh, root words, suffixes, prefixes. Um, so, like, uh, I'll give an easy one, like hematoma. Okay. Is a bruise, but heme is is the. So you break word. down medical terminology. Right. For blood. So she's like a walking dictionary. She is. <laughs> how do how do you do it? How do you do in that field? Is that something you really like or? Um, I guess so. <clears throat> it's kind of easy. It, it, may I suggest becoming a me a, a medical attorney <laughs> down the road? Maybe. It's, well, I mean, I'm just saying. You know, you look at career paths where something like that could take you. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, you know, you understand the terminology that well and it comes that fluently to you? Do you speak a second language? No. Uh, you may want to think she, about she that, does, too. She does now. <laughs> you may want to think about that, too. Right, and she got the, uh, Dan got the gold medal and Cassie got the gold medal. So. so you're really good at it. So you understand languages that you don't even understand yet. I guess well, so. Well, she's embarrassed by this. I think it's awesome. I couldn't yeah. speak another language if it, so never mind. 
right. <laughs> Next to Cassie, we have um, Ansley Davidson. And, Good morning. Uh, why don't you tell us what competition you did this I year? I was in one of the new categories this year. I did Urban Search and Rescue. Okay, so you saw our stuff. How'd you do it? Now, when did, what does that entail? Like, what is um, the challenge? What does your challenge entail on the district level? For the district level, it was just a test. It was mostly engineering how they work, how certain parts work. Okay. Urban and, Search and Rescue is robots. So oh, it's all mechanical based? It's yeah. robots with an arm. Okay, and what is what are you thinking that the state level might entail? We have to build a robot and it has to go through a course, pick up a couple things, explosives, and right. they have to be get rid of safely. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have three days to do this. Well, actually, they, they have to build their robot here um, and, and document it in an engineering notebook in under five hours. And then they'll bring their built robot to the competition. And like she said, they'll go through an obstacle course. But the, the person driving... It's still a pretty interesting time constraint, though. The person driving the robot can't actually see the robot. They're going to be in a separate area looking at a video screen. So they're going to be looking at feed. Well, that's... Um, yeah, that's under normal conditions. If yep. you're in a disaster area and there's a pile of rubble and you're trying to search through it, you can't see anything anyways. Or most, uh, most oftentimes these things are done from a command vehicle. That's right. Cool. She's not, she's shy. <laughs> so it is the first year that our school has done um, urban search and rescue. Back in January through a STEM program, um, we had the Army National Guard come here with some robot kits and the manufacturing department and the IT department were able to build robots for the day and run them through the obstacle course. And so the manufacturing um, uh, students uh, Mason Washington and Joshua Fonts took the gold place medal and second place was Nick Langlos and Ansley Davidson so we have two teams going uh, to do the robot competition. Are you looking forward to states? Yes I am. So do you have to build an entirely new robot for states or are you going to use the one that you previously we have to build one and we have to have an arm on it that can go out a certain amount because of the course you have to go into certain things and get whatever you have to get out. Right. It has to open a standard mailbox. Yeah, because that's where, yeah, they're probably having you build for a letter bomb scenario. I was, I worked for the police department for 13 years, so I understand some of this stuff. We had a gentleman walk in once with a, with a, uh, a thing he wanted to make into a lamp. And it was a Vietnam era grenade, a long grenade. Oh, wow. Luckily, it wasn't active, <laughs> but we had to treat it as such. And it was in our front lobby for several hours until the state police bomb squad came and detonated it off site. Wow. But yeah, those things really do happen. So you're building something that potentially could be a scenario that could be used, you know, down the road. If you, if you do something successful, talk to the police department afterwards. They may buy it from you. I'm, I'm, she thinks I'm kidding. Well, that but these things do, no, really, they do happen. And we literally had a guy, uh, hey, I wanted you to check this out. Uh, you know, I was going to make a lamp out of it. And I went, I stepped back and I went, Sarge? <laughs> yeah, wow. So these things do happen in real life. And people do have things like that. And as you just, I don't know if you guys follow the news, but San Antonio just had a letter bomber, package bomber, a couple of weeks ago. Right. So you're doing work that's, that's real life. Very good. Next to Ansley, we have Mark Krikanoff. He is uh, here from the IT shop. Mark, why don't you tell us what you're competing in? Um, my competition is computer programming. It's a new language, and it's called C Sharp for me, but there's a combination of C++ and JavaScript, two more languages. It's just a simplified version of both of them. And it's about building a software it's like Skype or anything like in the computer itself. And I can build anything I want while using internet. Just build it, run it, no internet you need it. If I'll make it. Such so a way. it's kind of a wide open competition. You don't have to really, there's not parameters that you have to make the program do or? Um, 
I, uh, for to build a program, I have to use a special software called yep. Visual Studio. Yep. And develop it there. But is do they give you the criteria? It has to meet these certain criteria for what it has to do. Yes. Okay. Um, like in here, it has to, like, for the program I have to do is like a convert the uh, from um, British, French, Italian. Um, currency into a dollar and make a program to do it. Okay. And it has to have only three buttons on it. Exit, clear, and calculate. Wow, okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, he's given an example of a, a, a program that they've done in the past. Right. So he will be given a new project. You know, when he gets there, he won't have any idea what it is. And he'll have to make the program run and then save it on a, a disk and hand it in. It so like you really have to do, not only you have to write the program, but you have to d make sure it's doing all the, w you, you want the program to do all the work, not the user, right? So yeah. in, in the example you gave, if you only have three buttons, the user puts in one thing and you have to think of all the possibilities and the calculations, right? Yeah, it's all about math and making a right calculation in it. Cool. Yeah, there was one, one year uh, the kids had to uh, make a, a page where... Uh, if you were doing online pizza ordering, you would put in like one pizza, two pizza, and it would that you would have the option to select pepperoni or combo or cheese, and then how much. So you have to calculate how the math would add up, also. So it, I don't know. It seems very complex. <laughs> yeah, because you're taking all the guesswork out of it. You don't want. Yeah, I understand what they're trying to do, and I think that's awesome because you have to think of all the ifs. You know, the, the, you, you want the user to get the right result, and you have to think of all the ifs. That's pretty cool. Right. So if you put in two cheese pizza and it's $8 a pizza, you know it's going to come out to $16. But you got a cheese and a pepperoni, make sure the math comes out properly. Very nice. So. You ready for a break? Sure. All right, let's take a break on 89.5. We'll be right back right after this with more Tiger Talk.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV, Internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. 8.31 8.31 in the morning on WSKB 89.5 FM. We're back on Tiger Talk. Ms. B, you got some students, and they're going to make people hungry now, right? Yes, we are here <laughs> at Tiger's Pride Restaurant this morning, and um, they are open at 10.45 to 12.15 today, and they have a wonderful Thursday menu. Mark, can you tell us what's on the menu today? Um, today's soup is Mexican chicken and black bean soup. Or honey roasted par snip b- uh, biscuit for salads such as a garden salad uh, and it, of dressings Italian thousand Israeli honey mustard ranch balsamic balsamic vinaigrette and blue cheese mm. and ch- there's a chef a chef's salad for fresh greens of garden vegetables the top of ham and turkey and Swiss with cheddar cheese boiled eggs and with dressing of choice um, this is a really tough name Beatrice <laughs> du jour new Oreo style shrimp and grits mm, sounds good salad shrimp and with bacon onions peppers seasonings and a touch of cream served on the top of the cream with corn grits served with a pate salad braised beef shanks slow braised shanks with a celery carrot and onion finished with fri- fried par- uh, parsnip served with mashed potatoes with fresh broccoli that sound good actually yeah <coughs> yeah beef and for there's sandwich special orchard chicken salad wrap chicken salad with grapes and uh, apples and rolled with soft shell tortilla with lettuce lettuce and to, uh, tomato served with chef's side of, and pickle. Uh, cold sandwiches, um, BLT, turkey, ham, tuna salad, and turkey club served with chef's side, lettuce, tomato, and pickle. Grilled sandwiches, grilled cheese, glass of corned beef, rubin, ham, and turkey with cheese. Tuna melt, add bacon or tomato to any hot sandwich. Your choice of bread, cheese, omenas, and mustard. Oh, sure. I have to go to a tower site today up in Granville. I'm not going to be able to make it for lunch. Yeah. No. And he's making me hungry. Yeah, they got yeah. great Same. wraps, great <laughs> Breads. There's breads. Why? Honey or wheat or rye. Cheese, American, Swiss, and cheddar. Health center special. Serve of choice of a cup or s- of soap or pet- petite salad. Beverages, hot coffee. Regular or, or decaf, decaf, hot tea, milk, coffee, diet coke, uh, sprite, ginger ale, da, a root beer, or sunkissed orange. There's of course chef's future dessert, cookies, bars, or chef's special. 
I see them over there in the case, and that's making me hungry, too. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Thursday, all that great food. And Friday here is going to be the Tiger's Pride Buffet. So on the buffet, they have their garden. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'd make one of them read it. All right, let's see. Who We're doesn't want to talk there. the most? No, that right there. There she goes. It's all yours. <laughs> For Friday, there's a garden salad with dressings, Mexican chicken and black bean soup, roasted honey parsnip soup, carved apricot rosemary turkey, Viva Madrid chicken. Yeah. Sweet and sour meatballs, jasmine rice, curry chicken, brown rice, pulled pork empanadas, meatloaf gravy, breaded Polak, lemon, spaghetti pie. Spaghetti pie, yeah. You never had spaghetti pie? No. Really? Roasted potatoes, vegetable du jour, dinner rolls, and pastries and confections. Yeah, it sounds, sounds lovely. So, yeah, spaghetti pie is, uh, I've had that before. A little ricotta cheese mixed in there with sauce. They put it uh, with the spaghetti. I don't like you ricotta. Can, you can cut it into like a wedge. looks just like a pie. It's very good. Is it it's in a pie good. crust? No, it's not in a pie crust. I'm hungry. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Just listening to this. So, sweet and sour meatballs sound good. Viva Madrid chicken. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it must have something with a Spanish flair. Sounds very good. Yeah. So, um, that's what's going on to eat. How about a look at the weather? What's it doing outside? Why don't you tell us, Ansley? I know, uh, unfortunately, I think I saw a snowflake in there. Today it's supposed to be sunny. It's going to be in the 30s, so it's going to be really cold all day, but we should be used to that right now because of where we live. And unfortunately, tomorrow, it looks like it might snow a little bit. Wow. More no. snow. When will it end? <laughs> please not. No snow, please. All right. So I'm going to talk to Dan a little bit here about uh, industrial motor control. I wasn't uh, quite sure uh, what that is. So, Dan, what, is, uh, what do you have to do at a competition for industrial motor control? Well, we get a, they hand us a project with a diagram on it and we have to build it to those specs and make sure it works, everything to code. So what, uh, what kind of uh, equipment are you using? Is it just wires or what is that? Uh, miscellaneous uh, electrical components. Uh, I, I would get into it, but I'd probably just be blabbering on and on. But No, that's okay. We have about 23 <laughs> minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you pretty much just have to wire it correctly, and you get graded on. Now, how much of this reflects what you do in, in shop normally? Uh, the projects we get are very similar. Okay, so it's a good representation of what you need to know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and do you have a, are you working in the field right now? Yeah, I work at Industrial Technical Services right now. Nice. That's on Union Street right now? Yeah. There's shops on Union Street now? It's right there, yep. And so, the, so these tests are not like something that, <clears throat> you know, you have to know for a test and then you forget it. These are things you're doing every day, right? Yeah, these, it's more of like a concept. If you, if you know how electricity works, you can uh, put all the components together. Yep. Um, so there's circuits and transistors and resistors and conduit. Uh, what not, is all not that? Not as much circuit boards. Uh, it's usually just wire and larger components okay like uh switches buttons uh contactors what motors, things like that and how do they uh judge your project there's a whole bunch of different categories like that they grade you on uh, so like what are, what are some of them i mean how do you how what are the do they have a specific set of criteria saying you have to meet all these requirements yeah so on the on the project layout you have to make sure you bend all your pipes right, have all your ground incorrect, and uh, just make sure everything's perfect and we'll grade you on it. How do they know that the electricity is going through your circuits? Uh, I'm assuming they use a tester. Yeah, they got a, okay. they got a meter on the other end. I don't know. I didn't know if it makes a bell ring or <coughs> well, a light go off. Yeah, they, they'll replace the... He's not the, talking about a Rube Goldberg machine. He's talking about <laughs> regular wiring. <coughs> do they know what a Rube Goldberg machine is? Uh, I 
No. And they've never seen one of those? Did you watch Sesame Street when you were a kid? Faint memories, nothing I could... Watch the little ball go through all the different things? Did you ever see that video? Uh, oh, okay, never mind. All right. So uh, <laughs> he does have some big shoes to fill. His classmate last year, Kristen Burden, uh, got the gold medal at State's... Um, in industrial motor control, which meant he went to nationals to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, oh, wasn't he the only one that qualified all the way through? No, Kyle Hadley from Automotive Service Technology also qualified okay. and went to Louisville, Kentucky. I know but the year before it was just one student that made it past states last the year before. No, the last year was the first year we went to uh, really? national competition. Huh. Oh, no, no, you're correct. There Christian, was one. Christian went two years in a row. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep, I remember That's one correct. student I... I pay attention during Tiger Talk and the yes. superintendent yep, show, so I kind of right. know some of those. Sorry, Christian, if you're listening. So how many of <laughs> you guys want to go to nationals? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you don't think, you, you, don't think you, you could do nationals? I don't know. No? Why not? I don't know if I can. Okay. That's so fair. Got to have them study. Yeah, that's fair. Yep. So uh, uh, Christian Verdon took third in the nation last year, so we're very excited. So Dan, uh, his scores are, are very close to what, what Christian's were, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. Yep. Yep. So, so when do you guys all head again? When's, when states? Oh, April 26th, 27th, and 28th. So it's the end of the month then? It's the end of the month. Is there so. anything you guys need to do to prepare for that or anything outside of your normal classwork? So I see some shaking heads over there. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead, Ansley. Why don't you talk about your project? Well, one of the things for our category is the robot has to be built before we go. Yep. And there's a lot of specific rules that we have to follow mm -hmm. or else we can't. You're disqualified. And there's a time. I remember from the beginning of the show, there's a time constraint on that, too. You only have a certain amount of time to build it. Yeah, five hours. And they have to document all their... Um, how they yes. got the arm to work and everything in a specific notebook. So it's an engineering notebook. Any prep work you have to do for programming? Um, just preparing, like my teacher gave me an entire week to prepare myself, study, practice all the previous competitions, uh, uh, tests, just be prepared. So you're prepared. kind of using old, exam using old examples and trying to work those out? Yes, that's so right. So you're kind of in the mindset to figure a problem like that? Yep. Nice. It's all, it's, it's all going to be very exciting. So um, some other competitions that we have going, um, we have a team in additive manufacturing. And this year they're going to be designing a cell phone cover. So that um, has to have a movable part. Okay. So we have uh, two girls got the silver medal, uh, Sasha McCurchin and Alice Mosichuk from manufacturing are doing that. We have a gold medal winner, Derek uh, Simons from Automotive Service Technology and like I said Kyle Hadley had gone to nationals he stopped in school the other day and uh, he's been mentoring him a little bit uh, so he'll know what to expect. A basic health care we have a gold and silver winner it's two sophomores from the Allied Health Shop uh, they'll be running through 10 different stations um, and doing a presentation on a health care topic so they're busy preparing and that working sounds for busy. That. that sounds like a tough competition yeah, too. Yeah, it, it's it's very intense. They have to do a, a five to seven minute um, topic on a health um, skill, and I'll just say to how to take a temperature. And so they'll present a poster and um, explain that to the judges. Probably infection control techniques and things. Uh, we have a. A silver medal winner, Vitaly Nazaritz, he's a senior in carpentry. This will be his third year going to states. So wow. I, we're very hopeful that he'll come home with the gold. Uh, customer service, we had a first and a third place winner. Gold was Brianna Hoffman, and third was Jasmine Brooks. So that's a business technology. Um, someone calls customer service complaining. Sure. How, do you handle, how do you handle those complaints? So that's, that's exciting. Electrical construction wiring, our first place winner was Frank Florick. He got the gold medal. So uh, we're excited about Frank going and representing uh, the shop along with a Dan in electrical wiring. We had a bronze winner in first aid CPR. So Erica Merrick, 
And uh, Erica, shout out to Erica, got accepted at uh, three colleges. She's going for pre-med. She chose Hofstra College in New York. So she's very excited Down to Down on Long go Island, there. yep. Yep. Um, Inter-networking, another um, student from the IT shop, Adija Barber, got third place. Uh, very excited, sophomore, so she's hoping that, you know, next year. Running the switches. Yeah, yep. Uh, medical math, we got a gold medal winner. Uh, medical math, uh, Marina Zuverell, also from my shop, very exciting there. Uh, medical terminology, we have Cassie and we had a silver place medal winner, Lisa Lapko. So wow. She's going also. Nursing assistant, we got a bronze medal from Brooke Thompson. Uh, so Allied Health did very well this year. Um, and then the robotics teams. We're also taking six other students with us. We have an entrepreneurship team. Um, they're from Business Tech. Uh, they'll be, de they've designed a business plan and that ha has to all be ready by April 6th, Friday. They have to mail their presentation of their business plan to the state office. So they've been busy since the beginning of the year. No Coming out of crunch time for them. Right. And then we have two students in related technical math. So at the beginning of the year, we had a few students wanting to take that. They took some tests with Mr. Ball, our, our math instructor here. And uh, the top two kids got selected. So that's Ethan Pagetti and Dan Radinov will be representing our school for related technical math. Wow. So we're excited there too. That's really so, cool that the academic side of it, there's part of that too, so. Yes, yeah. You ready for your final break? Sure are. We'll wrap it up after this.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes and Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. Underwriting for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. For more information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, Great futures start here. Underwriting for community radio is provided by the YMCA of Greater Westfield. Every day the YMCA strengthens the community through programs and services focused on youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. For all the Y's many programs and services, visit us on the web at www.westfieldymca.org. The YMCA, 67 Court Street in downtown Westfield. We're more than a gym. We're a cause. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Hi, and welcome. We're back. Uh, it's been an exciting day for us here. <laughs> you weren't expecting the host this morning. No, I <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're very excited about uh, Skills USA. It is going to cost about eight, over $8,000 for all of us to go. We have 27 do you guys uh, fundraise for this, or is it supported we, by the school system, or half, or a little bit of both? Um, it's uh, basically supported by the school system, and then we have fundraise this year. We had a, um, a booth over at the craft fair, okay, and we raised some money there, and we've had some great um, donations so far come in. We had um, uh, a nice uh, couple on Noble Avenue, I can't think of the name right at this moment, um, mm. donate, donate us some money. Okay. And then uh, B&E uh, in Southwick has uh, gave us uh, a nice donation um, in support of Dan Shaw. Um, we received letters from the community, just um, congratulatory letters that they have read the article in the Westfield Evening News. Nice. And, and how proud they are of the school and the students and what a great job they're doing. So uh, the community has um, come to our aid a little bit and given us some donations and sent along some nice kind words um, of encouragement for the students. It's, it's, been, it's been really nice to see um, that the city supporting us. Preparing for all the work ahead. Yes, yeah. Absolutely, so, that's great. Yeah, Skills USA, um, is it Dan Rowe, the Dirty Works guy? Um, Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe. Yes. Uh, is a big proponent of Skills USA. That's he, his foundation, yeah. Yes, he's usually at um, the national conference speaking. And, you know, this year's theme is work ready day one. And 
he's a big proponent in front of Congress supporting SkillsUSA. Yep. And all these students here at the school, they are work ready day one. So we're really proud of them. Uh, we have so many students out on co-op. Uh, like Dan said, he's out. Uh, you know, some of our gold medal winners are also out on co-op. Um, so we're really proud of the work the school has done and, and that we're able to compete in these competitions. Yeah, I think it's it's great that the, the talents that are being taught here every day are, are you know, out, you guys are able to compete in something like that, you know. I know with co-ops and stuff like that, you don't always have time for sports and, and do that kind of thing, but you guys are building teams in different ways, you know, through the competitions like that. It's the same team building exercise that you would have in a sport. And the fact that you're recognized for those, I think it's awesome. Yeah. It, they're real, we're really proud of them here. So um, Allied Health is going to be heading out to the Westfield Center, who recently by the state got uh, rated five stars. And one of the... That's Governor Center? Or uh, no, it's uh, Westfield Center. It's a Genesis Center. It's on the corner of East Silver. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, the road that the senior center's That's on. That's Noble... Is that Street or Ave? I can't remember which one's I'm not which. not sure which one it is. But uh, there's one of my students there, Michaela Lusby. I'd like to give her a shout out. Just got accepted into the Hoyoke Community College RN nursing program for fall of 2018. So. Those are tough because they only accept like 20 or 30 students, right, for those right, programs? Right, Yeah. Yep. So she did her prerequisite courses and got accepted. So we're very proud of her. That's, That's outstanding. Nice. Anything else going on at the school that you know about? or There is a field trip going on today. Anyone know about the field trip? <laughs> they're, all, they're here. They're stuck here. So It's a um, MGM field trip. Ah, um, yeah, construction so. update? Uh, I think there's... Um, or is it the, the job center? I think it's the job center with, um, I think, some culinary arts students, you know, hospitality. All, sure. All kinds of things are going on. They're looking there. for everybody, though. Any shop that you guys are, are in... They're looking for people in those. I, I, I get a list. We had their um, employment specialist on one of their HR people. And somehow I got on the mailing list. And they're looking for IT. They're looking for electrical workers in-house. They're looking for maintenance electrical. They're looking for maintenance, maintenance, HVAC. Right, I they're think looking it's... for just about anything. Carpenters. They're looking for just about anything that's in this building. They're looking because they it's have a... to maintain a facility 24-7 a great partnership that if we can you know build the roads with them you know i think our students will do well working with a big industry like that absolutely yeah. all right so you guys got about a minute left anything that we didn't catch miss i think we covered most of it we're we're just really excited to be going um and we have a, a meeting today after school, so they'll get their last minute logistics and kind of coordination meeting get their permission slips in and um room assignments and those type of things so that's outstanding all right thanks, good luck thanks for having us on good luck that'll wrap it up for tiger talk to today on 89.5 wskb hopefully we'll get rob and joe back next week in the flow the superintendent spotlight is up next we'll be back right after the break wskb's programming is generously underwritten by whip city fiber westfield gas and electric where they offer gigabit internet speed whip city fiber turning westfield's neighborhoods into fiber hoods on the web at whipcityfiber.com. Underwriting for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. For more information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield. Great futures start here. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is...